So welcome, dear friends, to the Church of St. Mary the Angels, right in the uh, centre of Dublin City, uh, just off the River Liffey, uh, on the north, uh, the north banks of the river. Uh, it's, of course, the church where the Capuchins have been uh, ministering, more or less, on this side for the last over 400 years. It's the church, of course, that the uh, Easter Rising of uh, 1916, uh, the first, uh, if you like, the first uh, violent outbreak happened just outside the door of the church and in other places as well. It's also uh, the church where the priests uh, from Church Street ministered to the leaders of 1916 and indeed their families as well. It's also well known because we have uh, the Capuchin Day Centre for Homeless, uh, which was founded in 1969 by Brother Kevin Crowley. And uh, the uh, church, of course, is where our National Shrine for St. Pio is based. Uh, I'm not standing at the tomb, at the statue of St. Pio now. Uh, I'm standing at the uh, statue of Solanus Casey. Solanus Casey, of course, an Irish-American uh, Capuchin. And uh, someone who I just want to tell you a little bit about, including a very interesting story about from his life about his ministry and I took the liberty of taking some notes today um, I'm lucky enough to be able to speak sometimes without notes that can be a bit dangerous sometimes as well you know because we can get carried away on tangents and uh, we can kind of go off in different directions but I took the liberty of taking some notes today um, based on uh, the uh, life of Solanus Casey but I just want to tell you about it because he's a fascinating Fascinating uh, story to hear. Um, he was, uh, as I said again, an Irish American. Uh, his feast day is the 30th of July, by the way. I could have actually put a pause button on this and waited until the end of July to tell the story. But he's an Irish American uh, whose family came from County Monaghan. Now, there were many, many family members. Uh, he had lots of siblings, and many of them, in fact, became priests and religious. Uh, Father Salani, Salanas had a vocation to the priesthood, but he struggled with, uh, with the, being able to do exams. So um, his, uh, his vocation was to be what they called a pastor simplex. A priest would just say mass on his own and uh, not preach any homilies. Uh, just a priest that would say mass with the people at the side altars. In Wisconsin in 1870, Bernard Francis Casey was one of 16 children of Irish immigrant parents. After leaving his family farm, he worked as a logger, as a hospital orderly, as a prison guard and as a streetcar operator. While at work one day, he witnessed a murder, which affected him deeply. It was an experience that served as a catalyst for his higher calling. He felt drawn to enter the seminary, but as I said, he didn't have great academic abilities. Uh, and because of the struggles there, he was ordained a, a simple priest, a simplex priest, as they called him at the time. Uh, so he couldn't celebrate public mass or hear confessions or preach the sermon at a mass. That didn't deter him, so Father Solanus viewed his vocation as a gift from God and resolved only to be a holy priest, a holy friar. So he graciously accepted his role to serve as the porter of St. Bonaventure Monastery in Detroit. That meant he was the first person to meet the laity and the visitors and the callers uh, at the door of the church and to welcome them. He embraced his humble ministry with deep love for Jesus and for all who would come to the door, particularly the sick, the poor and the troubled. He became the channel for God to touch souls and tend to the most needy in his midst. Indeed, through his prayers and blessings, there were many miracles, both physical and spiritual, uh, attributed to him even when he was still alive. Now, he once wrote, we must be faithful to the present moment or we will frustrate the plan of God in our lives. He inspired people to peacefully accept and find joy in everything and encouraged them to thank God ahead of time. That was one of his great messages, thank God ahead of time. It's like the lovely message or the lovely advice to pay it forward, where you kind of pay a favour forward instead of paying it back. Thank God ahead of time. His feast day is the 30th of July, which is at the height of the summer, and there's a great story, a story of a, an unusual miracle of, attributed to Salanus. On a hot summer's day in 1941, a fellow friar came to Father Salanus, asking a blessing before heading off for serious dental treatment. 
with a, a bad abscess on his tooth. The novice friar worried of the consequences uh, that would, you know, occur. Um, felt that it would be a major setback in his training and his formation. Father Salonis blessed him and told him, trust God that everything would work out. So what happened then was most interesting and really unusual. The woman, a woman stopped by the monastery just after the novice left to go for the treatment. And, and because it was such a hot day, she had uh, two ice cream cones. And she gave them to Father Solanus and said, you enjoy those now. It's a hot day. I see her in here and, you know, the fan is not working. And Solanus thanked her very, very much, gave her his blessing. But he took the ice cream cones and he put them in the drawer because he was still dealing with other visitors and other faithful people. So he laid the ice cream cones in the drawer and kind of forgot about them. And again, the business of the day continued and people came for mass cards to be signed and religious objects to be blessed and just for a little piece of advice or a chat. More than an hour later, the young novice returned and reported that the dentist found nothing wrong with his tooth and that it had completely and spontaneously healed without any medical attention. Father Salanus thought of the ice cream cones as a way to celebrate now, you'd think after an hour in a drawer on a very hot day that they'd just a pool of ice cream, just a gloop. But no, the ice cream, both of them were actually quite fresh and still frozen. And uh, they both enjoyed the ice cream and they knelt down and they said a prayer to thank God for the gift of uh, the medical problem being uh, solved. That's a nice little story about Father Sananus here on this uh, this warm June day as we gather uh, on Padre Pio TV. Now friends, until next time, thank you very much for listening. We'll keep in touch and don't forget to say a prayer for me and I promise I will make a prayer for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord show his face to you and be gracious to you. May the Lord raise his countenance and give you his peace. Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I leave you with two uh, messages from Father Solanus, two sayings. Thank God ahead of time and blessed be God in all his designs. Solanus, blessed Solanus Casey, pray for us. Amen.